In this video, I want to explain how the elites get away with trauma-based mind control. What is trauma-based mind control to begin with? To separate fact from fiction, because you have many YouTube ministries out there that lead people astray with many weird suggestions, trauma-based mind control is a type of witchcraft in which you break down the mind of a child or of a human being in general on a young age and this breaking down happens through multiple shocks and remember the human mind is an associative tool the mind makes associations so you break down someone's mind to repetitive shocks those shocks can be can be caused by either sexual abuse or intense psychological abuse because remember children don't have a complex brain yet so to psychologically shock them you can't just use words because the children don't even know what those words mean but we do it intense love with intense emotions you can psychologically traumatize a kid or just physical abuse label it as uh, discipline or out of the blue just act out weird against the kid without any further explanation and do this multiple times. All the, these things co contribute to those multiple shocks you cause to a child or someone at least younger than their early teens. So what happens as follows is that the brain, which is the physical mechanism to govern the body, develops scar tissue to cope with the shocks it received. Now the scar tissue isn't that much. If you want to know more about scar tissue, you can go to a neurologist. I'm not going deep into the physical part here, but the brain develops scar tissue. And what happens is the human being will live on, will quote unquote move on as state in the world without realizing that something quite horrible has been done onto them. The human being may even forget what happened to him or her because the mind, uh, let me say, developed bubbles around the shocks so the individual wouldn't be overwhelmed by them. And those bubbles cause am amnesia. So you don't know what happened. Just because you cognitively don't know what happened doesn't mean that the consequences are there. The consequences are still there. And what happens is the energy field of the child or early teen, I'm saying the energy field of the human being, becomes fractured. There's still an energy field, of course, because a human being is a spirit being, but the energy field is so broken down that evil spirits can easily walk in and out the energy field of that individual. So evil spirits can even use that individual as a puppet from time to time, and the individual doesn't even notice it. And that's how you have folks that become demon-possessed at a very early age. That's not because of them, it's by what the environment did onto them. Some folks scare those demons their whole lives and even die and then the demon moves on to another individual. What it comes down to is that you shatter someone's mind which caused them not to be able to function without the strong guide from the outside. That's the purpose of it. So what happens is that you teach the human being if it's, this happens at a very young age, it's much more effective. You teach the human being that they are nothing without the attention of attention from an external authority. That's the purpose. And what happens is when this human being grows up into and matures into adulthood, the human being will have all kinds of psychological and emotional dys dysfunctions. Now, if this happens to a single girl, let's for example, the background of this video, this 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 acting, by the way, you see the shadow of a guy drinking a bottle and an, a child actress that looks at him in a scary way, holding a teddy bear. Now, this is just acting, but what does this suggest? If this was a real scene in real life, it would be an alcoholic father that's drinking a lot and is about to explode. And the child is frightened, thinking what's going on there. Now, this would be the case of a direct 
violation of the core safe uh, core needs of the little girl. Because remember, the human being has three basic needs: safety, security, and significance. In this case, all three are violated openly and directly. It's obvious. The mind has no problem processing open and direct violations. It's the covert violations, the extent of periods of time, that are the most difficult to process. You're able to process them, but it's more difficult. Now, if it has happened, is this happens to a young girl? Subject her to this trauma-based mind control. She will grow up quite dysfunctional. Probably she will become promiscuous or she'll have gender dysphoria. Maybe not even want to be a woman anymore and all of that. It will be, it will be obvious to the community that she is a victim that needs help. Now, some of those victims turn into reprobates to me. They're not victims anymore. They turn into perpetrators, but that's, but that doesn't automatically, but that's not an automatic thing that just because we're victimized so severely, they automatically become perpetrators. No. If they're not delivered, however, and they don't turn into perpetrators, they'll turn into enablers because they'll be used by perpetrators to do what they're doing. You get what I'm saying? So even if they don't turn into perpetrators and, and evil people, they still need to be delivered. Now, with a single individual, it's easy to recognize. When you do this trauma-based mind control to a population, everyone grows up with dysfunctions. Now, dysfunctions will not be exactly the same for every individual because you still have the individual households where they grow up. Some households are far more resilient than others, but overall, the whole population develops psychological issues. So psychological issues become common in that community. And because such psychological issues are common in community, the people from that community will not notice it directly that there is something wrong with the community. It can be, for example, that you have a community where people are quite emotional and they tend, not emotional in a natural way, because you can be emotional in a natural way, but let's say that in a community, people tend to be hyper-emotional to the, to the extent that they tend to become violent quickly. So you need to be careful what you say to anyone in that community. If you say the wrong thing, someone may snap and kill you. If that's the case in a community, that means that collectively, the people suffer from complex PTSD. Yes, that's a collective complex PTSD because there is a trauma that happened to the community. The trauma caused psychological harm to the members of the community. Collectively, they collide together, so they became acclimatized to a trauma traumatized environment. So now they can't see anymore that there's a big dysfunction in the community. So let's say now you have a community where you have collective trauma. One way to soothe the trauma so that people will notice it is through alcohol. So you build a lot of bars, a lot of uh, pubs, and you make sure there's, there's, there is abundance of liquor over there. So then every weekend people go to the pub or to, to a party to drink. And it's common people get drunk to the extent they don't know what they're doing anymore. Now, a socio sociologist would look at it and say, well, people want to belong to a group, so that's why they go to pubs. But an anthropologist like me would look at it and think, okay, why are people going to a pub collectively knowing that they're going to do something that may harm their health? So an, an anthropologist May real, will realize that the attitude of the people is self-destructive. And then he or she will look a bit into history to, to look for a pattern. And then you'll see, hold on a minute. This community knows a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, this community knew a lot of gun violence or a lot of knife violence. Suddenly the government built a lot of pubs and the knife and gun violence dropped. And then you realize, ah, these people are traumatized. That's why this is going on. So trauma-based mind control is, as I mentioned before, it's breaking down some, uh, someone's mind. If it's done to a, a community, it's breaking down the minds of the people in that community to such an extent that they become dysfunctional towards one another. And this dysfunction will turn into danger, which is obvious. It will turn into violent scenarios. And then you have an external authority coming in to regulate the out-of-control impulses of the population. 
And by, and by doing this, the population gets attached to this external authority figure. And they begin to think that without this external authority figure, they're nothing. They're worth, they ain't worth anything. That is what elites do to, uh, mo to many, uh, groups. You can do this to a Chinese my, my community in a society, or you can do it to the bl black population of a community, or sometimes you can do it to the white population, or let me say the Ar Arab population. You can do this to multiple uh, populations. The purpose of trauma-based mind control is to divert attention away from Christ. It's all about keeping people away from agreeing with the Creator and walking in real victory. But that's not all. World, we have to say, people that aren't born again and aren't renewed in their minds, they tend to seek relief. Okay, so this relief seeking is something, is a dysfunction that comes because they are not born again. They are born, but they're born in a fallen state due to fall of men. The only way this um, inherent dysfunction that they call inherent inherent sin can be dealt with is when someone is born again. And being born again enables them to renew their minds so that they are operating in, in the power of Christ, as Christ intended. But as long as someone is not renewed in their mind, and renewing in your mind can only happen when after you become born again. So for all those that are not renewed in their mind, you can trick them into extents, in, into intense and, let me say, you can trick them into intense relief seeking that goes way, way too far by causing multiple shocks onto them. Because they have a fallen mind, you can do this easily. Someone that's renewed in their mind will process things far quicker because they look at the bigger picture. They're able to process things because they're Christ-centered. Anyone that's not Christ-centered is susceptible to trauma-based mind control. And again, it doesn't work out the same way with everyone. But it does have its impact. And, above all, trauma-based mind control will affect the sexual relationships in the community, which of affect the marriages and the families are formed, so the dysfunction will go from one generation to the next, and the pagan rulers themselves don't have to cause those shocks to the community anymore, because the community will be shocking itself. And the community will get used to being shocked by the parents and their leaders that they don't, and they will get to shock each other. And they don't realize that they are malfunctioning in a self-abusive manner. They won't recognize it until you have someone who's renewed in their mind that comes by and stops it, that breaks a cycle. For example, if you have a small girl uh, from a black community in America and she receives a, pe uh, a gift from either uh, a teacher or someone that's a, a white skin color and she is overwhelmed with joy she begins to cry what's going on? This girl has been traumatized into thinking she's nothing without the approval of anyone with a white skin. So the moment she receives acknowledgement it overwhelms her. Now, and this traumatization that she went through happens by her peers. No, not really peers, okay, by her environment. And her parents, of course, by the previous generation, who themselves were traumatized collectively. That's how it goes on and on and on. I hope this video has uh, revealed things to you, or summarized things I've spoken about before, because I've spoken about trauma-based mind control before. Just realize that the way out of trauma-based mind control is the renewal of the mind. Every other thing is just extended relief. Well, that's it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.